Hey everyone, uh, thanks for watching. I got a great show for you today. I have Kyle Wanger here with me today. And when I look at Kyle or I hear his story, I sort of think back to my beginning, right? He's been in the business a couple of years. He's got a great full-time job. He does real estate investing as a side hustle. Uh, he does, he looks and creates deals. He does some flips. Uh, he does some buy and holds, right? Landlording kind of stuff. And he's just a guy that's after my own heart. And I look forward to seeing what he gets accomplished over the next decade or so. But I thought we'd step in and, and see what Kyle's doing today, right? He's been in the business a couple of years and really talk about it, you know, being someone who started in their 20s at 25. So Kyle, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, really good. Hey, happy to be here. Before I, before I start, I just want to say thank you for basically having this platform. Uh, I've been following your YouTube page, your Instagram for a while, and I think your, your book is, I didn't read it yet, but hopefully I get a copy of that. And uh, I think what you're doing is phenomenal, and uh, so I appreciate you. I uh, feel honored to be on here today. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You got it. No problem. And we will take care of that book thing. Um, so why don't we just jump in and sort of talk about just, you know, like all the shows, you know, like, what are you doing today? What do you got on your plate? What are you looking for? What, what, what is, what's keeping Kyle yes. busy other than so, the day job? So I, I self-manage uh, all my units, which is, I'm, I think I'm at 18 units now. Some are in a partnership, some are on my own. Um, so I self-manage most of those. Uh, I have a flip going on uh, here in my local market, literally two blocks away from my house. And uh, so I, I kind of go there every day, check on the progress, manage the contractors, take pictures, uh, just kind of document the whole thing. So that's kind of what I'm going, what I have going on right now. Looking to always build uh, my rental portfolio. I actually prefer those over uh, the flips, but the flips are are, are great to kind of dump back into into rental properties and, and also honestly pay off some of my debt that I have accumulated from college. Um, so that's kind of my little background about me. I try and stay busy. I love the real estate stuff. So I'm, I'm usually looking at real estate stuff while I'm doing my full-time job, so, yeah. which is I, I do, I do graphic design uh, for a, a corporate company, a software company. And uh, so I enjoy that. So I try and find an even balance between both of them. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I think uh, doing your day, your day job well um, is the right thing to do, right? It, it, you know, you went to school, you got educated, you know, go get paid for that, right? And earn the return. And then what you're doing on the side, right? Through then this multiple side hustle, self-managed flips. I mean, just many kudos to you, right? 20, 25, 27. Uh, that's how it should be done, right? Uh, you know, someone who's been through that path, you know, sort of 15, 16 years, you know, into your future, you know, in a decade, you're going to be in a, you know, if not sooner, a pretty special place to make some choices. And, uh, um, that's really, really cool. So I, I'm curious about the self manage You got 18, 18 units, meaning a mix of apartments and houses or are there 18 yeah, houses? It's, it's, a, it's a mix of mainly multifamily, small buildings, two to five units, okay. and throw in some single family units in there as well. Um, all within, I would say all within 10 miles of each other. Oh, wow. Um, most of them here in my hometown and then some uh, in, in the downtown area uh, in my county. So okay. I, I have, so far, it's, it's been going pretty well. I haven't had uh, too many issues. Knock I'm on wood. Yeah, knock on wood. I'm always curious about the first deal. Do you remember the first deal? I do. Yeah. So I actually, I'm going to give some shout out to, uh, to April Crosley, who I attended her meetup in Brooks County. Uh, it's a phenomenal meetup. And I got to know her, got to know her, uh, her background. And I actually took her course. And I learned how to, how to, how to find leads, how to market how to use list source and this, this and that. And so I went and I downloaded an absentee owner uh, list just in my town. Cause I wanted to know where all the multifamily absentee owners were in my town. And then I'd go and Google street view and be like, all right, which one looks the ugliest. <laughs> and so that's kind of, I was like, I mean, no, no money to spend on marketing really. I had, I could, you know, I could afford a list, but I didn't want to go and do all the mailings. There's quite a couple hundred properties. And so, I literally Google street viewed a lot of the stuff that was in this downloaded list came across one that I saw the guy paid and he paid like 30,000 for it two years ago. And like, it's still a mess. And I was like, <laughs> this guy, I, I, I can steal one here. I'll be able to go buy this thing. And so I, I actually cold called the owner, looked up his phone number, cold called him. And I was like, Hey, like, uh, my name's Kyle. I live locally. Uh, I want to buy your property here on cherry street. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, I don't really want to sell. I was like, well, I'll make you an offer anyway. See what you want to do. And uh, I tried to get him to owner finance it and we just couldn't come to terms. And one day I just I sent him a text and I said like, look, here's my cash offer. And at this point I didn't have any money lined up. I was like, ah. what, am, what am I doing? I was like, what am I doing? This is scary. But April's like, just find deals. So you'll be all right. So 
found this deal and I, I lined it up. He agreed to the, the offer and I said, we'll close in, I think I said 20 days. And I was like, I have 20 days to find money. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and in the meantime, I wasn't telling anyone about this. Like I was just jumping into real estate on my own. No, like no parents saying like, what are you doing? Like I just did it. Um, so I ended up taking a, I found a private lender, took a private lender through the property, showed them all the numbers, um, took a contractor through with the lender and ended up getting, getting it financed through them, uh, held onto it for six months and refinanced it. And the property appraised for like way more than what I bought it for. I just knew it was a great deal. Um, so that's kind of how I got started and just kind of, I didn't even, I didn't even borrow all the money out of that one. I kind of wanted to, you know, I didn't want to over leverage myself. Yeah. So I kind of used, went the private money route, honestly. And that's now great. I ended up where I'm at. So. Well, again, there's every time you hear a story like this, we got to peel back the nuggets. First and foremost, you, you went out of your comfort zone. You went to a meetup, you know, you're trying to figure out right how to get more financially secure and real estate is often an answer for that. So kudos to you to go to April's meetup. Uh, April is, a, is, she's a, she's a wonderful person and a great coach and mentor. And I think for we sure. all can learn something from her. Uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time and she teaches me stuff all the time. It's kind of amazing. So shout out April. Um, but then you also took action, right? You, you stepped in, you bought her course, uh, and you went out and got a list. And then again, you grind, right? You did the, you did the work. Um, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, honestly, it didn't feel like work. Like I was like, that's when I knew I was like, I found something I truly like to do is none of that felt like work. Like I would look forward to negotiating with the seller and, yeah. and walking the property and like running the numbers. That was all like super, super fun to me. So it didn't feel like work at all. That's awesome. And then, then you cold call, right? Not everybody's comfortable <laughs> doing that, right? Oh my God. You got to talk to somebody on the phone. Are you kidding me? I think it was the instant gratification part. Like I wanted to know like, yes or no, you want to sell. Like, I don't want to wait for my letter to get in the mail. And then like, I hear from you in a six months or a year. I yeah. want to know like, yeah. do you want to sell this place or not? That's, that's kind of where I was at. I wanted to get a deal so bad that I was willing to do that. All right. And then you, then you get them to say, yes, let's just pick a number, say 40 grand, whatever it was. And then you're like, uh Oh, I got to go find some yeah. money. And again, right. April and all these folks say, you know, if you, if you find a good enough deal, money will show up. So you take a private money person through it. Yeah, I'm guessing they gave you all of the purchase money. And yeah, did, purchase money and the closing costs. And then yeah. actually a little bit of money for repairs. Okay, cool. And then, so you spent the first, what, three, four months fixing it up? Or was it rent ready so day I, one? Or so I, that's, the, that's the funny thing. I bought it with tenants that I inherited that were there uh, long term. And they're, they're still there today. They were there, I think, two or three years before I bought it. And I bought that two years ago. Now they're still there. And wow. it's been a a great property and i haven't done a whole lot of repairs to it it's just some minor stuff but nothing to go and so if you go I, google I, I street increased, i increased rents a hundred dollars for each unit since i've owned it and you it's a um, duplex yeah okay yep Do, so if somebody were to go google street view it today would it look just as ugly as when you bought it i don't know i haven't google street viewed it uh <laughs> lately i i think it looks better now but i'm not sure it might still have the ugly <laughs> roof and siding and windows and it's bad looking, but now it looks a lot nicer. Okay. There, that's what I'm going for. Cause you did clean it up, right? Cause you saw a problem. You saw value creation. Then you, you increase rents. Then you go back and do what you should do, right? You go out and do a cash out refi. You get rid of the expensive private money. You put on bank rent debt. Another thing you okay. said that I loved is you didn't over leverage. Um, that is. Yeah, I could have, I could have pulled a lot of money out of that, you know, up to 80% of what the bank was going to lend. And the numbers just didn't make sense when I pulled the full 80 out. Like I wasn't cash flowing what I wanted to. I wasn't even cash flowing at that point. Oh yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have another deal to, to put it back into. So no, I took the kind you're... of conservative route and mm. now I have a lot of equity in it, but I also have equity in a lot of stuff. So I, it's, yeah. It's well, first off, kudos well. to you. I, I didn't, I actually talk about in the book, uh, creating alligators. It, so I never bought an alligator. Alligator is essentially a negative cash flow property, right? Simply said. Uh, but I did a refi and unfortunately the first time I did it, I took all 80% out. So I walked away with the 50 or 60 grand and also congratulations, a negative cash flow property. <laughs> How stupid was I? That's what I, that's what I didn't want. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know any better, but why would the bank loan me this? I mean, of course, but anyways, don't ever do that. Don't ever buy or create one. So c congratulations. Conservative investing is awesome. So you got that first duplex and you self-manage all of this. They're all within 10 miles. Life's pretty good. That, that, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, I'm having fun for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about the flip. What do you, what, what, so you got a flip going on. You said two blocks away. 
What, what's that all about? Yeah, so that actually, that lead came to me from a friend of mine who just knew, uh, knew what I did. I mean, I try and tell as many people what I do and what I want to do as possible. Um, so that one came from someone who knew I was looking for another deal. They happened to know who the seller was and the situation they were in. And, you know, literally called me. I went and looked at it the same day and made an offer. And then he, get, he the seller waited for the weekend to kind of think about it, if it's something he actually wanted to do. And he said, yeah. And I just closed on that last Monday and I have my contractors there working on it right now. So hopefully I'm thinking beginning of May, that should be ready to go. Okay. So um, you don't have to give me exact numbers, round numbers. What, what, it, what does a purchase price look like in, in your part of the world? I have no idea. Is it a hundred grand, 200 grand? What, what is it? So this, this particular, I mean, it, it can vary. So in my single family homes for me to make, you know, decent profit, I need to buy it in that 50 to 75 range typically. Okay. Yeah. And then you can sell it for the 135 to 165 range. Okay. And big figure usually 35,000 in work and sometimes not quite that much. So. All right. So you're talking for 35 grand, you're certainly painting, probably putting in new floors. Uh, yeah. Maybe kitchen and bath. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and it depends how, how the mechanicals are. Um, this one actually, it takes a whole new HVAC system. It was, oh. so, so the, the seller went and basically gutted this place he was going to live in it himself mm -hmm. so he was doing it how he wanted to do it to live in which was going to be super nice right and it is like you know life happens to some people and yeah it's set empty for a while and, and then life happened again and he needed to get rid of it so yeah i can't i came in so got it so you're going to finish up a job um you know so again so if, again all, everything you're giving us is awesome first and foremost you tell everybody what you do you don't you yeah. shouldn't hide being a real estate investor the more people you know and the more you grow your network, deals flow to you, right? There will be a time so true. five years where you won't even have to market anymore. You will have so many deals coming to you because your network would probably triple or quadruple what it is today, Kyle. And that's, that's just awesome. So, so congratulations. And again, this business is also about fixing problems. Whether it's that first duplex you found, which looks ugly from the street, or whether it was a, you know, a life event or a series of life events and somebody needed out. We're here to help people solve problems. It's not about sticks and bricks and, and all of that, right? Real estate investors get paid to solve problems. So congratulations. That's a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, so you're two years in now. Uh, is this your first flip? This is my third flip. Your third flip. Okay. So yep. you did two last year. If math I did says. two. I, yeah, I had one that was started in 2018. It sold the first week of 2019. Okay. Um, and then I did one in the uh, spring to summer of 2018. Okay, cool. So. All right. And again, what you said earlier, I wanted, I wrote down is, is creating chunk money while building a rental portfolio is awesome, right? Something that I couldn't do and I'm jealous of is I only could be a landlord because I was all over the world doing my sales job and I couldn't really run a, a contracting team. It, nothing two blocks from me made sense because I had to invest two and a half hours away. Um, so that was stolen. That opportunity was stolen for me. So the ability to create chunk money, the ability to process leads the, the best you can, which means maybe a hold, maybe a flip. Um, you're going to pay off your debt quickly. You're going to be able to buy, buy and keeps even more. Uh, this is pretty awesome. Uh, just before the show started, you also mentioned, I think it was tax deeds. You did something around that. What, what's that all about? Uh, so it was uh, at the end of the year, it was actually my first, first time for this. Um, went to the Lebanon County uh, tax sale, basically end of year tax sale. And yeah. I want to be nosy more than anything, just to see how it works. In, the, in, you know, in my future, I want to be able to, to go there and, and buy mm -hmm. some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I went and I ended up buying a property that's literally two blocks from my house. It's like an old uh, kind of industrial type warehouse that I, I picked up what I think at a great price. And I, I don't really want to, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I have a bunch of different ideas. Um, but we're not quite there to that point yet, but that's, that, that's my first experience at a tax sale. And I, I kind of don't any better. I don't think it's oh. kind of exciting. Wow. Very cool. So I don't know. Every state seems to have their own laws. Is this uh, a, when this tax sale happens, it's yours or does the, 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 I guess the legacy owner have a year to buy it back or how does that work in your no, So Yeah. I, I'm buying it at that end of year tax sale with you know, no liens, nothing. Um, clean title. Clean title. Yeah. So, and I, I did some of my due diligence. I was like, I was like, I better not have messed up here. I wasn't 100% <laughs> sure. I was, I was like, literally, I was like, I bid on this property. I was like sitting in my chair shaking. 
Oh. And my dad was with me, and I, I was like, I just looked at him, and I like threw my card up in the air and bid. And like the auction went like it was like 30 seconds, if that. Like each property was probably 25 to 30 seconds. And then you just walk up and you write a check and you pay for it, and the property's yours. And like in a couple congratulations, weeks, go to window number down. two. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, what'd you just buy? So but, uh, it was a learning see- experience. I'm glad I went. So now I know what to do next time. And okay, so I gotta ask. So did you go there with the intention of looking at that property or did that property come up and you're like, Hey, I know that property. Let's buy. I mean, yeah. So, so I, this property, like I said, is two blocks away. Yeah. I drove by it like every day, sometimes twice a day. Okay. I just knew like it's been sitting empty for a couple of years. And I was like, if anyone's going to fix this place up, like I at least want to be a part of it. Like I want to go and see what it sells like, sit, see who buys it, try and work with them, whatever. And I just happened to be the right guy at the right spot. And I, ever not the auction didn't really know like what the property was. And I was like, this is a, this could be a nice place. All right. It, so it again, takes you, a lot of work, so. so you went there knowing. So I, did, the I did some research about yeah. it. Yeah. It wasn't, you were sitting in you, Cause what I heard you say earlier is you went there to learn and next thing you know, your bid cards going up. Not quite true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I had no intention of really buying this property cause I didn't think I was gonna be able to afford it quite honestly. Right. right. Um, but you did do when your I started, to do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Since you bought it, what you bought it for half of what you thought it would go for. Cause it sounds like it was a screaming deal. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't really want to say what, it, what, it, what I bought it for on here. No. Um, Just a half but, quarter, 15 percent. Yeah. I'd say it probably brought like a quarter of what. Okay. Yeah. I there's a lot of meat on that bone. Good for you. Well, you know, hopefully somebody rents it from you. You can keep it forever and it'd be a great cash on cash return, you know? Yeah. And it's funny. Cause my, like my ultimate goal or not, this is my pipe dream is like to, to own a brewery. I'm a big ah, craft beer guy. Okay. And I, th- I always look at the building. I was like, this would be an awesome brewery, but I don't <laughs> have the brewing experience. So if anyone out there listening to this uh, is in Lebanon County and wants yeah. to start a brewery, I have a great building. <laughs> <laughs> you bring everything else. He's got the building. <laughs> Sounds like a part of your number one customer. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, that's awesome. So I'm curious, have you done anything else? You've done buy and hold. You've done flipping. Uh, you've done some, at least cold calling marketing. Now you went to a tax sell. I mean, what else? Have I've, you yeah. I've wholesaled one property. Oh, tell us about um, that. Yeah. So how, this, so uh, I knew, I knew a friend of mine was looking for a multifamily uh, building in a, an area that we're both kind of both fight over sometimes. <laughs> and uh, it was just a bill. I was, I was kind of tied up in some other deals. I was fixing up a five unit and I knew this one might need some work. And I just, I didn't want to, I didn't really want the deal, but I was like, right. there's gotta be a way for me to make some money on it. So I texted him. I said, Hey, like, I think I found a three unit, um, do a drive by, let me know like what you'd pay for it. Give me yeah. a ballpark range. And then he told me what he'd pay. And I went back to the seller and was like, here's what I can, here's what I can pay. Yeah. And then, uh, got under contract and we think we closed like 16 or 14 days later. And we did a double close on that one just cause the situation was a little, yeah, I, I didn't want to kind of felt bad doing that, but Okay. So that's how that, that's how that one went down. But I, I would, I would wholesale all day if I could. It's not that I don't like managing contractors. It's just way like you get your money way, way quicker than having to wait, you know, three or four months on a flip. Yeah, <laughs> so. This would be, this would be an interesting question. I don't normally get to ask it because not many people are able to answer it because you have experience in all three. I believe wholesalers think in days, flippers think in months and landlords think in decades. What do you say to that? I can 100% agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, because there's not many guys that have done all three. It's certainly not by 27. That's pretty cool. Um, now, when you talk about real wealth and you know creating a legacy, which one of those does that for you? Definitely the buy and holds. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I haven't even pulled any of the, my own money out of this stuff yet. Even the flips, go and pay down some debt, get put back into a cash account for rentals if something happens. Right. So I'm not really, I haven't seen, like I haven't pulled any of the cash flow out of my rental properties yet. I just keep building that account because my goal is to at one point invest in larger deals. Sure. I want like the hundred unit buildings, not the little twos and fours around town. Yeah. Not that I don't enjoy those, but I think that's, that's where I had to start to learn. Yeah. But I'd like to be doing the bigger stuff, not just here in Pennsylvania, but basically anywhere. It's, yeah. It's, Kind of what my goal is. Yeah. So something you're going to find in like in the book, I think is um, our stories are kind of, you know, other than the flipping and wholesaling, very similar. We, we sacrificed, we lived modestly. We didn't pull any cash out for 15 years. 
Um, even the cash out refis we did, we did it because we wanted to buy more stuff. And the other thing is we did, we started where we had to, which was houses in a duplex. And then when the market got too hot, we 1031 or exchanged our way into apartment buildings. We never got to a hundred unit. Our biggest was 18, but we got several of those. And, um, life changed, right? Cash flow went through the roof. Um, you know, and, and, and pretty soon you're, you go from a couple of units or 18 here, we went to, uh, our, at our peak, we're over 170 units. So, um, awesome. you're, yeah, you, you, yeah, thank you. You'll, you'll get there. I mean, you're way ahead of us. You're two years in at 18. I think two years in, we had three doors, you know, by comparison, three houses. So I can't wait to see what you get done in the next couple of years. You're on fire. So, um, I guess I'm curious about this. So you're 24 and if my math serves, serves me right, you haven't done anything in real estate yet. Um, so I, when I, when I was 24, I bought my, the house I currently live in. It was okay. a for sale by owner. Yeah. That's kind of where I got the bug. I was like, it's, it needs some work. Okay. I kind of managed the contractors to, to get it how I wanted to. And then I move in and I'm like, dang, like I'm stuck paying this mortgage by myself now. Like <laughs> I need to find a way to make more money. And, uh, Mortgages started, suck. I, yeah. So I started, I found like bigger pockets and then I found that, you know, these meetups and I, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad and it completely changed my life. Amen. Like I, I, I wish I read that book when I was in high school because I think, I don't know where I'd be today if I read that in high school. I don't know if I would have went to college. I don't like, I might be at 800 units. Like I, I don't know, but yeah, I did, just like it's the stuff they don't teach you in school like blows my mind. Like you don't learn any of this in a, in a college course or a high, school, a high school classroom. It's just, yeah. I mean, if I had one wish, you know, Rich Dad Poor Dad would be a great book for high school seniors. I mean, last right, semester, absolutely. you know, high school senior, when you're not doing anything anyway, <laughs> might as well read a book to see, you know, do I really want to go to college? Is it for me? Right. If you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer, guess what? You're going to college, right? Cause that's kind of like required, yeah. but that's not for all of us. Right. I don't know that I would have gone to college. I know I certainly wouldn't have gotten a master's degree if, uh, if I'd read that. So anyways, it, it, I, I might have still went to college, but I would have, I would have started looking at real estate in college. I would have tried yeah. to do wholesaling. I would have tried to own the property that I lived in in college instead of renting it. Yeah, house hack. Other ways of paying it. Yeah, I would have tried to do something like that. Yeah. But hey, you live and learn. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you know that book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, because I know it's that literally changed my life. Yeah, I, I give it the credit it deserves. It, it did for me as well. But it, now, so you're 24. Is, is it that simple? Rich Dad Poor Dad changed your life, and you just looked at the world differently, or was there other things going on? Or I mean, what, what's the, what's the story? Ah, huh, not. I mean. I just kind of fell in love with, I've always enjoyed like being around construction. I don't physically okay. do the construction, but I always thought like, you know, you drive down the road and you see these buildings and you're always just like someone, it's like someone owns that, like people own yeah. that building and they got to be making money off it or, you know, they wouldn't still be there or whatever. Right. And uh, I just knew there, you know, if you look and do your history or do your research, everyone that's a millionaire, multimillionaire is in real estate in some fashion. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's probably the, the quickest way to build, to build wealth. And yeah. I was like, if, if these people can do it, I can do it. I think I have enough motivation and, and self-discipline to go and yeah. try and do it. So very cool. Uh, and I did. I'm just guessing you're not married right now. Nope. Single. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's another part. Like I have <laughs> a lot of free time. So it's, I figure I'd try and make as much money as I can. Yeah. Now. Make it now before life events happen for you. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Marriage and children and, and all of that. So that's good. So I, I'm curious now. So, okay. So we know what you're doing now, 18 units to flip some tax stuff, wholesaled something. What is, what is three years out? What, what, where, where is Kyle in three to five years? Right. Um, what do you think? Yeah. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to be able to buy, you know, five to eight rentals a year. Okay. Uh, and I'd like to be able to flip, you know, 10 to 12 houses a year and just oh. really build up. I, I mean, as much as I don't enjoy the flipping, I, I think I can market and find the deals to, to make money doing it. Uh -huh. And I, I, I still, I'm in an area where, where it's, I want to help revitalize the whole area. Mm -hmm. I, I have a company called Revital Home Co. And it's kind of like, you know, there's some real dumps around where I live and I want to be kind of that positive change in the community and start doing stuff that people are like, wow, like this, just because the building is ugly now doesn't mean it has to be forever. Like, and I want to be able to invest back in and make my community like another great place to live. I feel like every area around us is like up and coming. And then we're kind of like behind the eight ball and everything. So I want to be able to, not that I want to invest in bad areas, but since my hometown and my home County 
Yeah. I literally think I can make a difference and I have some other people around me that want to help make a difference. That's so awesome. that's kind of, I want to, I want to be able to build that business where it's not just like, yeah, we're making money, but I want to do good for the area. That's kind of my mission behind my that's business. Awesome. And, and I think that doing that, you'll acquire better tenants. You'll take better carrier property. People just, I think, I think positive change really starts in the home Yeah. and I want to be a part of that. Um, so yeah. that's kind of my outlook on real estate. I think it can be a real positive. That's awesome. Cause we, there's a, again, I invest in Fresno, which is like two and a half hours away from me, but I saw this firsthand over the last three years. There's, um, every big city has a downtown, right? So in our, for Fresno, there's a downtown zip code's 93701. It's rather, it's rather small zip code geography wise. Um, but in the last three years, there's been about a hundred million dollars of outside investment come in and it's radically different today. Uh, and it starts with guys like you and I, right? We're, we're taking on three, four, five flips yep. that went on for kind of the first year. Then big money started to see what's coming on and they leveled a couple of areas and built these brand new condominiums and stuff. And um, it'll absolutely happen for you, right? Others will follow, right? Leaders, leaders follow leaders. So step up, make it happen. Um, you know, in five years, you won't even recognize an area that you choose to focus on. It'd be pretty awesome. So by my math, in three to five years, you'll have 50 to 60 units. You'll be flipping, let's call it 10 a year for easy math, grossing 300K, uh, probably wholesale a few in there just because, you know, life's going to be pretty good, right? You're going to have a team, so, you're going to have employees, or just you, you're comfortable being a one-man show or what? Yeah, I'd like to get to the point where I have some employees. I don't want a huge, a huge company. I, I've, I'm from a small town. Um, I, I don't. I don't need a whole lot to live. I can live off, you know, some minimum stuff. It's, I, I just, I don't want huge overhead. And I'm, yeah. I'm in, a, I'm in a corporate job now where it's like I feel like I'm kind of just like a number, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's not everyone knows. You. I wanna, I wanna have like, I wanna be able to build the culture that I work in. Yeah. Um, because I, I know what I want. I wanna be able to provide. I think it'd just be an awesome business to work with your friends. Yeah. Um. But I would tell we'll, you, that, I, I, I don't want I don't want a huge team. Let's put that. I want to have my team of contractors, maybe yeah. some VAs doing yeah. some of the work that I, I don't, I don't want to be doing anymore at that point. Yeah. But I'm still very hands on with everything. I, I enjoy it so much that I don't, I don't want to give it away quite yet. Yeah. I'm still building it. So. Yeah. There's an interview you might want to look at on my channel from Greg Dickerson. Uh, he started out as a contractor in, and I think it's called uh, uh, a toolbox in a truck to $200 million. I think it's what it's called. Um, basically he talked about how he was just a contractor with a, a toolbox and a truck that built up to a hundred million dollar or $200 million business, lots of employees. The punchline of all this is he enjoys his life now that the business is gone. No employees. He spends his time in his truck driving around jobs. Everybody's at 1099, right? You don't yeah. need employees. That's the key to yeah. this. It's kind of a trick question. I meet some guys are like, no, I want to have 10 employees and I want to have, you know, five, five salesmen and I want two disposition people. And I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. yeah so I don't, I don't want to get that big. Right? I don't want to, because the main reason I got into this whole business is really financial freedom to get my time back and not be sitting in front of computers, you know, 40 hours or eight hours a week. That's not, that's not what I want to do with my life. I realized that after I went to college and graduated and got the job, I'm like, that's this what all I had to look forward to. Yeah. Like, Congratulations. I want my time back. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to be able to go and go on vacation and travel and, literally do whatever I want, whenever, wherever, yeah. with whoever. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my main goal is the financial freedom. That's my why yeah. and the generational wealth. Like I want, you know, if I'm fortunate enough to have a family and kids someday, like I want them to, you to know, have it. a better life than I had. So. That's awesome. So you want to go live, you go be in the desert for 90 days, like April and still run your business? <laughs> you know, I would love to do that. I, I might go to the beach. I don't know if I go to the desert. <laughs> yeah, amen. Um, <laughs> Me too. But, I look at the desert and go, Ooh, I get sunburned. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean the whole motorcycle thing around there looked pretty cool. I would definitely be into that, but yeah, I'd I think I'd rather be on the beach. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you did mention market. I, what are you doing now? Are you doing mailers or cold calling still, or what kind of marketing are you doing? Yeah, I I do a lot of drive for dollars. That's kind uh, of my. I'm still very cheap when it comes to marketing. I I it's working. If I can, if I, if I can go from zero to eighteen units in a couple of years, and not spend a whole lot of marketing, I'm going to keep trying to do that until hey, I man. have to. So I, I'm okay with going, putting door knockers or door hangers on doors. I'll, I'll knock on doors. I'll, yeah. I'll cold call. I mean, I'll, I'll build lists from driving for dollars and then sure. cold call. Yeah. I'll even, you know, try and find them on Facebook and message them, find a relative, whatever yeah. research. I mean, I, I said, I, I, like I said, single, I have time. I'll sit at home at night and I'll 
Just I'll do search the driving for dollars. Yeah, it's it's. I still that's, enjoy it. So that's awesome. So I'm curious about this. So you have a, you have a busy full time job. It takes what it takes during the day. You have morning and evening and weekends. How many hours do you think you're spending on your real estate business a week or a month? Whatever you're comfortable answering. I'd say almost probably another forty because when I leave here, I'm going to projects. I'm driving for dollars. I'm going to the bank. I'm paying the bills. Like I'm going to meetups. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if it's a full forty. I, I mean, I try and try and do something different on weekends, but okay. I mean, I still I'll wake up Sundays and Saturdays and Sunday mornings and go drive new neighborhoods okay. and try and find stuff. So, so I'm curious. You, it seems how big of I mean, how many? What's the population or how big is that? Uh, so Le- Lebanon County is a I would say in that 140 to 150,000. Oh, okay. Uh, and again, not, that's not, the not, temp- not an overly huge county. All 18 units and all your flips are in that county. Yes. Okay. Yep. Very, very cool. So um, you're 28, 27, 27, 27. Yep. If you don't want to answer this one for whatever reason, you don't have to, but are you looking to be quote unquote out of the rat race by 35, 40? I hope before that. Okay. I'm, I I have a I have a goal of 30, 30 years old. Um, that's why I want to build the flip business up because I think that would allow me to leave my job sooner. Yeah. I know it's I, I don't mind leaving that job and going into another job. Right. Like if you know flipping sounds like a job, but if it's something you actually enjoy, I I would I mean. Yeah, it's I, a I job. Stop it. It's, stop it. Stop it. It's a job. You're right. It's, it's a job. <laughs> Stop it's a it. job, but if if you actually enjoy it, it doesn't feel like work, and that's where ah, I'm at. There you go, job versus I, work. I'll give you that. Yeah. So, okay. I'd I'd much rather prefer to wake up and go check out my projects than yeah. come check my emails. Yeah. Well, well, here's here's the rub, right? As a guy that's been doing this a while, you can actually once you get up enough depreciation write off from your buy and holds, you can actually manage your flip business. So you um, you're essentially living tax free, right? Because you can have all that depreciation write off from your rentals slam that into you again, your, your flip income. And as long as you don't blow it out, right? If you, if you're writing off a hundred grand in depreciation, you don't do 300 grand uh, in profit. You, you can, you know, that first hundred grand is tax free. So yep. yeah, it's a pretty good living. So yeah, um, real estate has so many great benefits. That's, that's another reason. It's just, yeah. Awesome. And just wait till you, you do it. Yeah. And just wait till you start doing a 1031 exchange, right? You take a house you got and flip into a five or a 10 unit. That's what, that's what exploded our growth was powerful. Yeah. yeah. We went for, we, we sold a house, got a five unit. We sold two houses, bought a 13. We sold another house and bought a seven. No new, no new cash. It was all equity that we used. It was beautiful. So um, that's coming your way. That's pretty cool. So um, as we wrap up, I always turn it over to the guest, Kyle. You can sort of share how people can get a hold of you or what you're looking for. You want somebody to partner on a brewery, it sounds like. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you'd like, the floor is yours. Yeah, I don't. I, I just think that uh, first off, thanks for having me on. I, this this was a lot of fun. I wish wish I could do more of this stuff. Um, yeah, I just I just I'd, I'd encourage people that if you're not happy with where you're at, you know, make a decision in your head to to learn something about this industry because I literally think I'm kind of living proof that it can be life changing. Um, just you know, a lot of I, I always hear people say, "Oh, I wish I knew how to do this," or "I wish I could do that," and it's, I, my thought is like. Like, what do you mean you wish? Like, we all have the potential to to do those sorts of things if you literally make the decision in your head that you're going to go and do it. Um, so that's kind of what happened with me, and I just kind of fell in love with the whole process. So um, I hope uh, hope we can keep in touch. I, I'm, like I said, I'm appreciative of you having me on here. It was a lot of fun. Um, people that are listening, you can follow me on Instagram, at uh, Revital Home Co. is my business Instagram handle. I try and post, you know, regular content there, just of my flips and rentals and kind of my story and my journey and, and uh, trying to build a business and a brand. And I, I really, really enjoy where I'm from. You know, I love where I'm born and raised and I want to make a difference. And I think real estate's the way to do that. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I can't, I can't, I can't lie. I'm having a lot of fun. That's awesome, Kyle. And we will certainly do this. Uh, well, I'm going to hopefully do this with you once a year. Cause I can't wait to see what you get done every year. Awesome. And um, again, shout out April for making the connection. We always appreciate what she's doing for, for everyone. She's, She's doing so much. It's, it's pretty impressive. So uh, I want to thank you for your time and uh, wish you all the best and go driving for dollars. Hey, I'm going to go head out right now. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> you got it, man. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. See ya.